If you own a super split log splitter, then please stay tuned because we're going to show you some upkeep and maintenance that you need to know. Welcome back friends to Build A Lot Acres, Case here. In today's episode, we're gonna go over some upkeep and maintenance of the super split log splitter. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm removing the homemade extension I made for the table. Um, so it's made out of framing lumber, which is typically gonna be SPF or spruce pine fir. So it's a softwood. I'm gonna be taking these sides off and I'm gonna be replacing them with some oak that I have. You can see that this one's split just from using it, stacking wood on it, handling big rounds. They just didn't hold up. So I'm gonna be replacing it. And in a minute here, we'll see the opening. Here you can see me doing the other side, unbolting from the table and then screwing, unscrewing from the, the wooden table itself. Here I'm tracing the pattern onto some oak, cutting it out with my circular saw, and then I'll be clamping it on and screwing it in place. Pre-drilling the oak, because it's a hard wood, so it's, the screw's not gonna wanna go in without pre-drilling it, especially the screws I'm using. You'll see them in a minute. They actually have a flat head. These are meant for garage doors, but I wanted to try these instead of using the through bolts so they don't stick out on the side and catch anything. I'll tell you, these little impact drivers are really nice. I've been using these for a number of years. They're the best way to drive screws. They actually make drill bits with a hex shank so you can use them to drill holes too. Now I'm cutting some PVC to make sliders for the pipes. I wanted to use metal pipe, but I didn't have any that was the right diameter, so I used these instead. I might replace them with metal in the future. And now I am unbolting the rack in order to replace the cam follower, or the roller bearing, yoke roller, whatever you want to call it. In previous video, you saw that the ram doesn't want to come back smoothly. So we're going to take a look at the old bearing, and I'll show you why in a minute. Here's the old video. You can see it only goes back about halfway and then stops. It should go back all the way. Here's the old bearing. You can see the flat spot. That's what causes it to not go back. It catches on that flat spot and just drags instead of rolls smoothly like it should. Here's the new bearing. I'll give a link to these in a minute. So this is a Japan bearing. It's IKO brand. I think new these go for $11.70 a piece. Here's the picture of the bearing and the numbers in case you want to order any for yourself. And here is a link I found on Amazon, I think it was. But you can buy these in the multiples. That's how I would buy them. Buy a few at a time. Here's the cross drilled bolt that holds the bearing. It's drilled in about three quarters of an inch to an inch, far enough so that the grease can get to the center of the bearing. I'm just cleaning it out here with an old drill bit just to make sure any dried up old grease isn't gonna prevent new grease from getting into the bearing like it needs to. We'll give it a test with a grease gun here in a second. Just making sure that the grease comes out. There it goes, so we know we're good. Now we can move on and install the new bearing, which is what I'm doing here. I have it all held with two by four, just so it doesn't return. There's springs that pull the rack back, so you wanna make sure you have something preventing it from moving back. You could take the rack completely out, but I didn't choose to do that. I just loosened up the carriage enough to get the bearing replaced. Just tightening back up the cross-drilled bolt. Removing all of my wedges and my two by four. I'll be tightening back up the carriage bolts. They're not carriage bolts, but they bolts for the carriage. You guys know what I mean. The regular hex bolts. There's three in each side. So 
So we've got all the bolts tightened up, and now we're going to clean off the table and the beam. We're going to polish it and clean it up with a wire wheel and an angle grinder. Make sure we get rid of any old residue or surface rust. So once it's all cleaned up, I'm going to blow it off and then apply some oil. This is strictly to prevent it from getting any surface rust. It's not meant to make anything less or more slippery. It's just to keep it from rusting. And then I get the inside area, which is hard to reach. And now you can see me applying some regular all-purpose grease to the underside of the rack teeth. This is going to make a nice, smooth, frictionless connection with a rack in the, in the gear. I have a pretty liberal coat. I don't have any rubber gloves, so I ended up using an old trash bag I have. I have to get some more rubber gloves. Now I'm just wiping off any excess grease or anything off the beam, making sure everything looks good. Make sure it slides nice. Now we're going to give it a test, see how good it returns by itself. See, it's returning nicely, which is what it should do. Like I said, there are springs underneath, so you can actually replace those springs if you need to, if the roller bearing doesn't make it return. Now we're gonna try it on some red oak. Make sure it returns by itself without me pushing it with a piece of wood, as I've done in the other video. It's returning nicely all the way. So this is all good signs. As I said previously in the other video, it's really important to keep that beam clean so that roller bearing rides out smooth. The HD and SE models have more roller bearings. So it's an upgraded rack design, but they don't offer that with a J model. I have seen people upgrade it themselves, but I haven't chose to do that. If everything works good. Good thumbs up. The last thing I'm gonna do in this upkeep and maintenance video is we're gonna replace the engine oil. This little SP170 Subaru calls for 5W30 in the cold weather about 18 degrees at the filming of this video, including in the barn I'm in. There's no heat in this building. So starting it up to do those demonstrations, kind of got everything flowing good so the oil came out nice and easy. It is a tough spot to get to. The drain plug is right on top of the beam, so you really have no choice but to get all over the beam and you end up having to wipe it off like I am here with a rag. Could You could put some kind of an extension, like a pipe, Maybe an elbow with a plug if you wanted to extend it past the beam, but I haven't done that. Maybe in the future I'll do it. I don't know. Wiping everything up. Make sure it looks good. Then we're going to take some nice oil. And uh, I'm going to use a flexible funnel. That's the best way to get it into this particular setup. You really can't pour oil in a regular funnel. It will come out. So the flexible funnel fits in there nicely. We're checking the oil. We'll start it up. Let it run through for a few seconds. Maybe... 15, 20 seconds, then we'll shut it off, check the oil level again, and that will complete the oil change. Well, thanks for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed the video. These are all good things to know if you own a super split or maybe you're thinking of getting one in the future. As always, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.